have what it say I am. I can have what it say I can have. I can do what it say I can do. Today you're being taught the word of God and your life will never be the same. Praise God. serve the Lord. Give him a praise, everybody. Many moons ago, God is for me. Who can be against me? Hallelujah to Jesus. Isn't that a beautiful thing to know? How many, how many of you know you're a child of God? Give the Lord a good praise in the house because you know you're a child of God. And you know, don't take it for granted, that question I just asked you, because we're living in a time now people don't know no more. And people who, who used to know is doubting it. But the, but the Holy Spirit has a marvelous work on the inside of the believer that can bring you to a place of knowing. Not guessing. He have the power to cause you to know and the power to cause you to see. And I don't care how much mud been in your eyes or how much concrete been in your brain. He can, re he can rinse it all out and cause you to see like you ought to see and know like you ought to know. And they used to say it like this, you know, when, when I, you, you don't, how do you know you're saved? It's a knowing that God gives and you just know that you know that you know that you know. <laughs> Come on, praise him in the house, somebody. You know that you know, huh? And it come like that to when you say, will this need be met? I know that I know. Will my healing manifest? I know that I know. Will my victory manifest? I know that I know that I know. Will my children be saved? I know that I know. Come on. And you go on that you know that you know. Now, somebody may think you're being a little arrogant, but God love it. When you affirm to him, you know what you know based upon what he said. Come on, bless him, everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. One day he put it inside of my spirit to know that I always have, no matter what happened in this earth, I'm a child of God. And because of that, I always have. Not because I'm special, just because I'm a child of God. My father will take care of me. Now you can, you can doubt that because you don't know how much he loves you. But you can't get me to doubt it because I know that I know that I know. And then my know or know it. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Give him a shout in the house. Give him a shout in the house. There's a wonderful things are happening in Abundant Life Church International. <clears throat> the Lord has positioned us where we are touching the globe. I wish, I wish I had at least two believers in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God that he's called us to reach the globe. And, uh, you know, if you got something good to say, the world should hear it. I believe in this house there's a quality of word that is prepared for the world that we live in. Therefore, the boundaries of the past will no longer hold or restraint what God want to do with Abundant Life Church International. Somebody thank God with us. And the reason be because the work is of God and not of man. That's a major understanding that all of us need to have that we are part of a, of a work here, I can't speak for everybody else, that was born out of God's heart. Therefore, the gates of hell cannot prevail against this church. Isn't that beautiful to know? Hallelujah. 
There is nothing that the enemy can throw. We won't overcome it. No distraction. We won't go around it. Amen. Because the Lord is in this. And, and, and he is the Lord of the harvest. And he have called us to be part of reaching the lost. Helping the despair. The hopeless. The broken. The downtrodden. We are strategically put here by God. Now, people may have misunderstood this move, but I can't do nothing but pray for you on that. Because the Bible said, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I mean, God lead his children by his Spirit and not by popular opinion or by votes. Amen. Or by, I don't think so. That ain't how God lead his work. He lead it by his spirit. And it has pleased the Holy Spirit that we be here. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, yeah. He, it has pleased him that we be here. And so as a result of that, now we're ready to move forward into why God got us here. Hallelujah. You know, we, we have, we've impacted the city of Charlotte. We're here in Matthew, but we'll impact the city of Matthew and the city of Charlotte and the surrounding places. Come on, praise God with me. <clears throat> we believe that the Lord will give us a unique and distinct sound here that will cause people to come from all walk of life to receive, to be helped, to be strengthened. The Lord shifted in my heart, said, this is a training center. And that means people going to come here. Are you listening? I mean, you know I'm ministering already. And I'm doing good, too, because I got a cast in my mouth, and yet I'm up here. I love Jesus. <laughs> so so uh, the Lord has put it in my heart. They will come here, and we will heal them. What we gonna do? Spirit, soul, or body, or all three can be affected. But when they come here, all three will be made whole. What a mighty God we serve. We will not only heal them when they come, we will train them or teach them. I'm talking about you too. We will train you and teach you, she said. And then we're going to send you. You ain't going to be able to stay like you used to. We're going to put you out there in the field. And you're going to tell, and you're going to say, look what the Lord has done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of you want, need vision, I just gave it to you. Why don't you praise God for vision? What I'm doing here, I just told you. We will heal you if you're sick. Physically, spiritually, soulishly. It doesn't matter what have been, been affected in your life. You sit under this word here on Rice Road, you will be healed. You will be healed. You will be made whole. Huh? If you're broke, we're going to teach you how to get some money. If, we, if, if, you, if you're crazy, we're going to bring your mind back around. Talk to me. There, there's, there's so much grace, <coughs> pardon me, there's so much grace in this place that it, it, that it is sufficient to overturn and root out anything that is associated with the curse that Satan or devils have done to mankind. Every church can't say that, but abundant life can because there's abundant life and abundant life. Abundance of love, abundance of mercy, abundance of healing, Abundance of deliverance. Abundance of blessing. Abundance of joy. Abundance of strength. 
There's abundant life and abundant life. Now, I need some abundant life for us to praise God. Yeah, the Bokosaya. <laughs> Listen to me. I don't care what it look like. They're going to come. They ain't got no choice but to come here. They're going to come because God is ordering their steps. Well, you can't find this everywhere. You got to go through some stuff to get to a ministry like this. Hallelujah. You say, sound like you're bragging. It's good bragging. Hey, Amen. You're a part of it, so I'm bragging on you too. Lord have mercy. Did y'all see uh, Tierra and the team up here doing the matrix? I wanted to help them out. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Something good is in the house, ain't it? Something good is in the house. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, last Sunday, Tanisha taught us the word in this place, man. If she wasn't my wife, I would still say it the same way. She taught us the word in this place. Come on here. God Almighty. Woo. Yes, Lord. Man, I, I, I personally, I said that was a classic message you did. That need to be categorized and stay out there till Jesus come back. You know, I don't hear to teach good word, but that was classic faith. How you please God. We have an assignment on our life to tell people how to please God. Of course, it's going to be misunderstood. If God put his hands on you, you're going to be misunderstood. Hallelujah. But the apostle said, is it right for us to obey man or to obey God? You make the decision. I'd rather obey God and be misunderstood than obey man and everybody understand me. You hear what I said? But, but that teaching <clears throat> and that message, as y'all saw, my Jewish friend, he was here. We brought him up and we prayed for him, you know. And it ain't like that, it ain't things going on with black folks, but at that point, we needed to pray for the Jewish people, didn't we? Because we always were praying for our own, ain't we? I love black people. After all, I'm black. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Black and anointed. Yes, indeed. But when we prayed for him, and when he left, he started calling, trying to inquire. He said, how can I get that teaching? What, what, was, what was taught here and the prayer that was prayed over me for the Jewish people. He said, he, I think he called Herod and shared it with Herod. He said, my life has been changed forever. This is a Jewish man who don't believe in Jesus. He said, my life has been changed forever. Now listen to me. Listen to me. He said, I want to go get it and first show it to my family. Then I want to show it to my peers and contemporaries. Because he said, I've never heard nothing like that before. And this is a man of knowledge and influence. He knows all kind of people on walk, all walk of life. Man, ain't that he ain't been to church. Even he know church better than some of us do. But he says something different about this church. And it is. That it's even turning a Jew to know the Messiah. That the light is coming on, that his Messiah, he looking for is our Jesus that we praise him. Come on, talking to me, somebody. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Because there's a blessing that come on you 
when you bless the natural seed of Abraham. There's a blessing that come on. Hallelujah. And so I just want you to see the end roll that we're making here already. That, that go without just saying, let's give some testimonies of what's been happening to people since we've been over here. I wouldn't get to preach this morning because so much testimony of one after another, left, right, and center. But why the enemy is shaking in his boots is because there's a real prayer ministry that has been birthed in this place that it will overturn the power of darkness left, right, and center. There's nothing he has that can oppose what has been birthed in this house. See, a church ain't great because they got a lot of people in it. A church is great because God's power and presence is in it. And if it stay there, people got to come because they're going to come and see what's happening. So you just stay encouraged with your pastor. Talk like I talk. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I remember reading over in the books of Acts, it said the grace of God came on the apostles and almost the whole city came to hear the word. Can almost a city come? Can we have city-wide impact? You know, that's Robin's baby, citywide prayer. Can we have citywide prayer? Come on, give me some help. Impact. You better know we can. Hallelujah. It's only the devil that want to put a shroud over people's head and make them not see nothing. But in this place, you're going to be able to see. Glory to God. Well, open up your Bible with me. I got a teaching in my heart that I want to share with you today. Amen and amen. Now, of course, you know, you ladies, and I want to say to you husbands, too, because if, if that $75 or $60, which you, I mean, what is that to spend on the quality of ministry that's being brought here by your, by your, by your first lady? She don't like it, but she is your first lady. Amen. So I'm going I'm to put it out there because it's legal, even though she don't like it. Amen. But she has sought the Lord to have an event here again. Not here in this place, but she had it in the city of Charlotte and had, it, had a vineyard. But now she's going to have it right here. It's come, it have come home. Come on. You, you are responsible for supporting what your church does. Huh? Now, I know that's hard for some of you. It's, it, it, it's pressure on you because some of you have a hard time even coming to church. I ain't fussing at you. I'm getting ready to teach you. You see, the Lord told them in Hebrews, inspired by the Holy Spirit, exalt those, seeing that the time is what it is. Are you listening to me? To not forsake to assemble yourself together. You don't have the right to do what you want to do and act like you want to act when you become a Christian. Where you get that from? See, that's called mass deception. And there are a lot of people who was once in the word ain't in it no more. Jesus say, search the scripture, for in them you find eternal life. The route to life is God's way, not your idea or the world's opinion about something. Talk to me. You know, I ain't scared of nothing, so I'm going to tell you just like it is. Because God takes care of us 
period. Now, so he said, as, uh, as you see the manner of some have, the manner of some have what? Have quit fellowshipping with the family of God. And the Lord said, I don't like it. That's what he said. He said, they have, they at the manner of some is. Why he said the manner of some is? I don't like what they're doing. How do you get at a place that you don't want to be a part of your family no more? The household of faith. You listen to me? And so somebody said, well, you, you, you can be saved and don't have to go to church all the time. Well, God didn't think that. He said, fail not to assemble yourself together. Am I in the Bible? I know you don't like this, some of you, because I'm working on you. But that's my job as a pastor, to exalt you to obey God. And it's hard to obey God without obeying an overseer. See, one and the same. If you say, I obey God, you also listen to the pastor that he gave you. Can I shock some of you? I know it's going to shock you. You can't have but one pastor in your whole life. You say, what about all these other, those ones you done picked? <laughs> <laughs> You don't get but one pastor. Paul said, you have many instructors. You don't have but one father. That one that really connects you and tie you to heaven. And watches over your life so you don't go to hell. Hey, Papa, this grace time, I'm going to give you a lot of grace today. And you're going to love it too. Then the Lord also said, the Bible said, even Jesus, our example, the Bible said when they came looking for him, trying to figure out where Jesus at, the Bible said he was at the synagogue. At the synagogue, which is, was his custom. It meant Jesus went to church all the time. Acceptance. They say, they say this is worthy for you to accept this. Let's go on, team. For therefore, we both labor and suffer reproach. Ha, 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 do I know about it? Do I know about it? Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. I don't care what the devil saying. He know it. You ain't stopping me. Glory to God. I'm called for real. To my bones I'm called. For therefore we are both laborers and suffer reproach, but I can handle it. Me and the God of the heavens will come through any reproach. Because we trust why you suffer reproach, why they talk about you, why they talk about your church, because of the living God, because of trusting. Huh? Anything you'll say about me over the years, what you'll say? He trusts God. If you don't say that, you don't know me. You'll have to come to that conclusion. <laughs> yes, no matter what come go, he trusts in the living God. Well, if you do it, you're going to suffer some reproach. What's the suffering reproach talk about? Come against you, misunderstand you, all that's a part of the loop. Because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who, that what? So there are some others in the house today. See, you ain't this thing for a pastor. He said for those who believe. These things what? Command it. Am I doing it? Then give Jesus some praise in here. If I'm doing it, give Jesus some praise. If I'm doing the Bible, give God some praise. See, 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 but I'm doing both. I'm not just teaching it. I'm commanding it. See, will y'all please start coming to church a little more? I ain't saying no please to you. I'm commanding you. I'm doing the... <laughs> Do nobody command me. I am while you sitting in here, I'm doing it. And if you don't listen, you'll get in trouble with the Lord. He's a bad man, ain't he? This was a setup. You didn't know it, did you? Let no man despise thy youth. 
but thou, but be thou an example of the believer. Now, underline that in your Bible. See, I say, see, some of you ain't undiscovered that I say, yeah, you got your Android. Yeah, you got your smartphone. But where's your King James hard copy? Start bringing your Bible with you to church. I want you to get back in the habit of reading the word. Don't let the world get you in a place that it have you all messed up with stuff. Amen. I got all the, I got the pad, the phone, all the rest of that. But look, look how big my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it say I am. I can have what it say I can have. I can do what it say I can do. Today you're being taught the word of God. And your life will never be the same. Pray to somebody. We don't watch out. The Holy Ghost is going to tear this church up in here today. Uh-huh. Some of the folks look around, what's, what's wrong? What's wrong with them? You, you ain't close enough to the fire yet. But you wouldn't be asking what's wrong. He said, let no man despise you, thy youth, but thou be an example of the believer in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come again, give, a, give attention to reading, to exhortation, and watch. See, no S again, to doctrine. Because the doctrine of God is one. Now, let's stop right here. What does this apostle say to his son? This is the apostle Paul talking to Timothy, a son, a young man in the things of God. He understood the challenge that he would naturally have disobeying God. But he also saw that challenge wouldn't be magnified when the environment around him began to change and harden on a whole nother level like it has ha like it has happened in the time of 2019 you got it he began to tell him he said now this is what's going to be this is what the last day is going to be like but here's what you need to do Here's what you need to do. And what you need to do is, number one, nourish yourself in the word of faith. Amen. Nourish yourself first. That means you need to be built up before you can build anybody up. Amen. You need to be helped before you can be a help. Amen. You need to be strengthened or you can't give strength. Amen. You need to have peace or you can't help nobody receive peace. You need joy to impart joy because you can't get joy out of lemon or crab apples. And some Christians are like that in their posture today because of circumstance, events, and so forth. But if you notice what he said to him, he said, then after telling him to rely on God, you will suffer reproach. For living and trusting in the living God, reproach going to follow it. So don't think it's strange when people around you misunderstand you for your walk with God. If you really walk with them, that's got to come or you ain't walking with God. It's that simple. If everybody understand you, God is not priority in your life. Fact. Everybody get along with me. Well, Jesus ain't walking with you. I can tell you that now. He's in you, but you ain't walking with him. Because when you set your life to please God, reproach stands up in front of you. But what you need to know, there's nothing that this life brings to us that the power of the word won't uproot it and overturn it. But now notice what he told him. He told him, be an example to the believer in purity, in love, and so forth. Then he said, give attention to reading. Ah, wonder what he was telling them to read. <laughs> so, so how, first of all, how are you going to draw from what you don't have? Now, how are you going to draw strength from the word when the word ain't in your heart? 
Let's break it down a little bit. Let's, let's look at it a little stronger here because I outlined it. It was at least five things he told them to be an example of, but I added six, and I, you'll see why. He said, be an example in godliness. So that means train yourself for godliness. Train yourself. Discipline yourself to be godly. What does that mean? You have to learn how to do what produced godliness in you or you can't wake up just being godly. There have to be deposit for godliness, don't it? Yes, it does because Paul told Timothy what it takes. He said, first, your life will be put on display, not me. Well, then how God going to ever use you to be salt? Because that's what you made. When you come to God, you are the salt of the earth. You know why it's so difficult to be salt? You get no praise or adoration for being salt. And most people, motivation, they got to get something out of it before they do it. And yet God called you to do things that the only motivation you can get from it in many cases is that he say, well done. I'm pleased with you. Thank you for putting me first. Thank you for doing that for me. Now you don't have to worry about what you've been dealing with. Salt. The essence of it is saltiness. If the saltiness leaves, the Bible said it's worthless. Look how many salt shakers around in the church with no salt in it. They have lost their savior. That don't mean you're bad. That means you got to come back around. Seducing spirits, teachings from devils, teachings that tell you it's, just, oh, it's okay, you don't have to go to church. And the Bible said, don't fail to do it. As you're seeing around you, many are now doing that. And he said, I'm not pleased with people who are not fellowshipping with my family. Because the body of Christ is the body of Christ, it's members in particular. Every member supplies something to the body. I bring something when I come to the body. You ought to be bringing something when you come to the body. Everybody have something to contribute to the body of Christ. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it. So that means if I have a deposit to make, I ain't bashful or ashamed to do it. For this reason, I was born. Hmm? They called me butch for many years. That was a perversion of who I am. Satan gave me that identity. I was put here to be a child of God. You have a purpose and assignment why you was born. You have been brought to the kingdom for such a time like this. And it's only the mercies of God that you're here today. You're not here because you've been so good or so excellent, crossing every T or dotting every I. It is the handiwork of God that your life has been preserved and mine. There are a lot of people who were here 2018 that are not here today. Their expiration date came, ready or not, it's coming. And it's the illusion of life to tell you that everything going to stay the way it is. It's changing while you're sitting here. What you don't know, the world will become more corrupt and more corrupt, more corrupt and more corrupt. Why? Because God has deemed it to come to an end. There's no politic that can fix this stuff. Why we're here, why we're alive, why we're well, why we're open to what God want to do, we must give ourselves to godliness. Everybody say, be an example. Be an example. All right, what did he say, be an example of? Number one, he said, be an example of what you say. Don't say one thing and keep doing something else. Woo, 
Quiet on that one. Quiet on that one. You told the Lord, 2018 closing out, Lord, this is my year of studying the word more. I will pray more. You can count on me to do what you call me to do more. Hmm? I know you told me to be one of them who clean the church. You don't clean it, though. I know you put it in my heart to help in this department and that department. You don't think it, it's important right now. So you keep putting it off and putting it off, and guess what? It ain't going to never happen. Because if you don't plan for it, you will not do it. He said, be an example of what you say. Folks on your job need to discover you don't say one thing and do something else. I mean, the ungodly supposed to talk well of us. That's what the word said. They say, don't go to church, those old heathens. They, they are heathens, but they ain't crazy. They know the difference between when a, people, when a person keep their word and when they don't. I'm going to be on time when... Huh? When? Hmm? Be an example of what you say. Write it down. Number two, be an example of what to do. They need to see, people need to see us doing what's right. We're an example of what we're supposed to do. Amen. Why did Paul tell Timothy this? He told him the times was going to be so corrupt. If you don't put something in place, you who are a vict you who got the victory will turn around and be a victim. And you won't know when it happened. Why? Because the spirits speak expressly that in the latter days, many will depart from the faith, giving heed to seduce his spirit. I was standing strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, doing what God called me to do. But I've been seduced. I'm no longer here, I've been seduced, not quick, slowly but surely, inch by inch with the devil, he says a cinch. He never take over nothing all at once. He inch his way in your life and inch you away from the things of God. He don't just shove you out of it, he inch you away till your consciousness have been sealed and you don't recognize what's right or wrong no more. And you got people who've been saved as long as Abraham crossed Can Canaan and don't know the difference between right and wrong right now. You say, how long that? I can't even tell you that's how long it was. I know one thing, you ain't had no business being in the kingdom of God for umpteen years and don't know the difference between what's right and wrong. Amen. Hallelujah. Do it sound like I'm fussing? I'm not. He said, be an example. If you do these things, he told them, he said, not only will you save yourself, you'll save others who will listen to you. I don't even really care if people like me, but I do want to do what God called me to do. I want to make sure I'm fulfilling the bill. It's too late in the evening to be playing Vegas and gambling with the things of your life with God. How is it you've been taught the word and the word has no value in your life now? How is it that you're treating this book like any other book now? Because you done listened to so many watered down preachers that there's no more conviction, and because you're seeing people standing for a crowd, that automatically make them right and godly. That's a lie. The way is narrow, and the road is still broad for error. Isn't that right? Come on. He told him, said, be what he said in charity. So he said, be an example of love in people, loving people. You know, when you're loving people, you don't talk about them. You don't talk about, you don't talk about what you love. 
When you talk about, when, when you loving people, you're there for them. Amen. Yes, what you love ain't no mountain high enough. Hallelujah. Ain't no, come on, some of you ain't been saved forever. Help me out. Ain't no mountain, ain't no valley to keep me. So what I, what, what's the essence of that? What you love, you will find a way. And you will. Yes, so the Bible tells us here, told, he told Timothy, you be an example of what it is to love people. And I love people. Yes, That's why I can stand up and talk to you like I do. Because I don't have no ill will, no bad heart. I love you. Yes. And that's because God put that love in me yes. for his people. And I'm not going to allow anything or anybody to corrupt the heart that God has given me for his people in the earth. I refuse to become a sour apple. I'm a love people. And that means you know I got your best interest at heart whenever I stand in front of you. I'm not trying to take nothing from you or do nothing to hurt you. Impossible. The love of God restrained me. Yeah, every now and then I want to cuss you out, but I can't do it. And I said every now and then, that ain't all the time. <laughs> every now and then I hear them words, man. I said, Lord, I thought I forgot how to say that. <laughs> say, be an example yeah. to loving the people. Yeah. What else he say? He says to him, uh, number four here now. He said, be an example to them of how to believe God. Amen. How to believe God. People need to see you and learn how to believe God from you. You should be an example to them. So what I'm trying to tell you, come on, brothers and sisters, let's just get real here about it. There are some situations and circumstances. All, all heaven is doing is standing back seeing how you're going to handle it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everything that comes your way ain't to take you out. God is with you. But God have left you in the earth as his witness, as a deposit. And you falling apart over, over a, 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 a car note or, or you falling apart because somebody uh, said something about you or you can't even stay seated where you've been planted because you offended. Where your faith? Where your ability to believe God? You can believe God for a house, a car, money, and honey, but you can't believe God to overcome offense feelings. It's my faith that I've overcome all the naysayers that have spoken against me over the years. Water on a duck's back, it rolled right off of me. I've been lost. I've been lost it. I, one time I wanted to be famous, but God took it out of me. So I don't even worry about that no more. <laughs> and you can only be an overcomer when the issues show up, you don't cry, you overcome it. You don't have pity parties. For whatsoever is born of God, overcome the world and this is the victory and this is the victory that overcome the world even our faith be an example of how to believe God that's for all of us in this building today excluding nobody People need to see somebody that can trust God and then see the outcome of it. Glory to God. Brothers and sisters, what this apostle was giving his son in the faith was a survival kit. How to survive the times that you're living in and be pleasing to the Lord at the same time. And I don't mean we're trying to just survive, just survive, but we're talking about living in a way that what God have called us to do, 
nothing can corrode it. Nothing can defile it. Nothing can destroy it. Nothing can put the fire out in your heart that God lit. Some of you cold as an iceberg now when it comes to the things of God. Ask yourself, how, how, how have you got there? You didn't get there overnight. It's been a process. Over and over again, God rebuked people in the Bible. Over and over again, he told the children of Israel, he said, when you get your houses that you didn't build, full of all manner of things that you didn't buy, when your land has expanded that you didn't till, when all the good things that I promise you has come to pass on your life, then your heart be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who gave you the power to get it. Over and over again, he admonished them, in your blessed place, don't forget me. In your down place, remember me. It doesn't matter the seasons of life you're in. Hallelujah. Make God a priority. If you do these things, you'll never fail. You'll never fall. You'll never be. I used to sing in the church. I used to usher. I used to teach Sunday school. I used to teach in the church. Used to be. The devil is a master of making used to be's. But when you deal with God, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the day of salvation. See, God don't deal with no past. He's the God of now. Ain't what God used to say, what he's saying now. And I can tell you now, everybody ain't hearing him. We need him. Amen. Well, we got a lot more to say, and the Lord will help us as we go on here. Because the essence of all of this, he said, give attention to reading. You got to get back into your word. And not only that, meditate it because see, you can read the Bible and it's nothing. But if you start reading and meditating what you read, then the application of that which you're reading gets a hold of you. Yeah, you reading and no inspiration, God ain't talking from the Bible to you yet. Because when the Holy Ghost begin to talk, he breathe on what you read. That's because you have postured yourself to say, Lord, feed me, talk to me, strengthen me, give me uh, help me be ready for what you got for me to do today. And it ain't just reading to get a message. It's reading to learn how to live with him. Study to show yourself approved. A workman that won't be ashamed in this life. Godliness profitable in all things in this life and the one coming. All this other stuff you're doing, it has a profit only in this earth. And all of it is going to fade out. We better reprioritize the way we live it. Lift your hands and